Welcome to In the Railroad Corner with Walter. This morning I have a bit of a cold. I say a bit of a cold. It's been three days now I've been putting up with this cold. It's going into my voice now. I've been through plenty of tissues. But I hopefully will survive. Today's video is going to be a follow up on my blue light. And maybe I ask some of my viewers out there for some help. And I'll explain what I'm talking about. Came down here and straightened up the workbench just a little bit. And got my information off my blue light. We're going to go see what we can find on the internet about it. I looked at my bulbs. Now that small bottom light smaller than the top light. Bottom light was 1408. I'm going to assume they were both 1408s. But I looked up the price and it's unbelievable. It costs like $50 to get 10 of them bulbs. Don't need 10. I get by with two. Got to be a better market out there for GE 1408 bulbs. That was on Amazon, 40 something dollars, $49. What a ridiculous price for some little light bulbs. Anyway, we're going to see what we can find on the internet. We're going to research our lantern and educate ourselves a little bit about it. You know, that thing would look real good repainted, but do it. it'd be hard to match that original color. Gonna need a lot of sanding to get it looking good. Right now we're gonna just, not today, but we're gonna take some WD-40 and clean it up and shine it the best we can. See if we can get a little bit of that rust off of there. But at least we got our working boys. And I got my workbench straightened up a little bit. When I started using this blue light years ago at the railroad, uh, well, I used it several years. And they, they quit buying them and supplying them out there at the railroad. And came out with a little plastic lantern. <laughs> Very similar to this Switchman's lantern, about the same size. Yeah. But they were blue and had a blue light on top of it. And you just had a handle, you could hang it out there and use it. It was built on the same style as these Switchman's lanterns. And uh, I never did like those lantern, those lights. The little blue globe just wasn't diddly. You can see a lot of them on the internet where people are sharing them around, pictures of them. Well, I, I went upstairs to investigate on Google or the internet, see what info I could get on my flasher. Well, it turns out this transistorized warning light, star flasher, I'll give you all the information down in the description, is pretty doggone rare. You can go to Google and then switch over to images and look through all the images. You'll see hundreds of railroad lanterns and lights and blue lights. But you won't see this one. It, I couldn't find a single one out there on the internet. Now, some other search engine, I was just using Google. Some other search engine might have it. And Google ain't got it in their repertoire. So I need a little help from my viewers out there that might be interested in lights and lanterns and railroad memorabilia to help me research this. I'll read you what it says on the light. Star Flasher. Transistorized warning light, model 875RR, circuit number S8070.22A, Star Headlight and Lantern Company, Honeyoy Falls, New York, 
Stratolite, SAE, dash uh, 5, dash 1A, dash T, dash 68, 6 star 9, whatever that means. I'll put it, info down in the description. How many of you video creators out there have done what I just did? Thinking the camera's on, do a whole presentation and spiel. Speaking off the cuff, I couldn't do it again if I wanted to. Uh, remember everything I was talking about. But the camera wasn't even recording. I gotta back up and start over. Kind of aggravating. All right, I think we already got the copy where I was telling you the info off the lantern. I'm gonna spend some time cleaning it up the best I can with WD-40. I've decided that trying to restore it would create, would decrease its value. This paint is a metallic color that would be really hard to match. It's got all these stickers and stencils and raised letters on there. I think my best opportunity would be just to try to clean some of the rust off of it. Clean up the lenses, get all the dust off of it the best I can. Maybe take these switches apart and clean the crud underneath them so they'll get a better ground. But I've looked all over the internet and there ain't another one out there. I need advice from my viewers. Um, maybe somebody that's got a lantern collection or knows somebody that does or got a catalog on railroad lanterns can supply me with some info on this particular blue light. I used this on the railroad for a good many years. Uh, in later life, they came out with these lanterns like this and quit supplying those. They were blue, had a blue globe screwed on up here at the top and basically made on the same platform as this Railroad switchman's lantern real made really cheaply and I never did really like them So I hung on to my blue light and used it on a regular basis uh, one advantage I had to this was uh, Taking it with me when I went on an outline point job um, There's a lot of material lights and railroad equipment that I had over the years that I wish I'd have been smart enough to save Sure got enough scratches on here. We're going to try to clean it up with some WD-40. But I'm asking my viewers out there if there's any info on this light. Uh, I'm telling you, I couldn't find anything on the internet. And Google, if somebody else's search engine might have something on it. And uh, maybe some of you out there got a little time on your hands can help me research this blue light. I went through a lot of pictures last night on Google trying to find another site that had a picture just like it or had a picture of, this, of a light like this. There wasn't one out there. Not like this. Now when I put this stratolite lens back in last night, I should have turned it with a writing upright. Next time I take it apart, I'll put it together right. Kind of got it in there sideways. I had no idea how rare this light might be. And what do you think? Would restoring it increase its value or decrease it? I mean, you can make it look pretty as a picture by sanding it down and painting it and make it look new, but it ain't never going to look original. I guess you could call it patina. This has got plenty of patina. I appreciate y'all tuning in today. This is Walter saying, have a good day.